Hello everyone, this is your host, your friend, your boy, Jet Black, the one and only, here with another exciting video, and in this video I'm going to be playing some AI Dungeon 2. Some AI Dungeon 2. In this adventure, I'm going to be playing as a pyrokinetic who doesn't understand how to use their abilities, who's trying to return a magic ring they borrowed to a magical realm to their magical university, specifically to their magical roommate. Uh, you use the ring in order to teleport to go see your family. Now you drop the ring down a grate, and you're about to get attacked by a superhuman zombie. What do you do? Let's see if I can complete all that in 30 minutes or less. I'm going to start up the timer and hop right into this adventure. You have the ability to control and manipulate fire. You have not mastered your abilities, and you struggle to control them. You were recently enrolled into a school for magical beings so that you can learn to better control your abilities. Your school exists in a magical realm and is protected from evil by a mystic barrier. You felt homesick, so one of your roommates let you borrow their magic ring so that you could teleport back home to see your family. After visiting your family, you walked to a warehouse to find one of your old journals you have stashed there. The journal contains notes you've taken over the past few months on how to control your powers. Just as you find your journal, you are startled by the presence of a superhuman zombie. In a fit of fear, you accidentally drop the magic ring into a grate in the floor. Your mission is to retrieve the magic ring and return it to your roommate without getting killed, scratched, or bitten by the superhuman zombie. I'm going to say, Zombie, I don't know how you got here, but you shouldn't be in the mortal world. Hmm. Leave me be. That's, I don't know. Let's see if the zombie can talk. I honestly don't know if the zombie can talk. So. This is an interesting starting point, I guess. Try and talk things out with the zombie. Hopefully not get killed in the process. The zombie crouches down and scurries at you like an animal. Oh, goodness. Uh, <laughs> I didn't expect her to scurry at me like an animal. I'm going to say, stop. Uh, so, let's see if that works. I, I don't know. Like, maybe it takes commands. Maybe it's kind of like a dog or something. Uh, fingers crossed. The zombie stops in its tracks and stands up. It begins to rub its head as if it is confused. You say, go outside and find a nice tree to climb. The zombie turns around, walks towards the door, and leaves the warehouse and finds the nearest tree. Huh. That's interesting. So I can just straight up command the zombie like a dog. That works well. Okay, I'm going to look around for a hatch. Oh yeah, that I can use to open the grate and retrieve the ring. That might be useful. Yeah, so my main mission is to just get the ring, teleport back to my roommate, and return the ring to them. I should probably report that there was a zombie in the mortal world. You are in a dark room. A lighted sign on the wall tells you that you are in ye old ammo shop. You are standing on dirty wooden floorboards. There is a counter in the corner with some old guns and ammo displayed on it. Okay, so the warehouse I'm in is called ye old ammo shop? That's cool. So... Maybe I can blow the grate open using, like, a gun? So I'm going to grab a gun and attempt to use it to blow open the grate and retrieve the ring. Yeah. So maybe, that, maybe that's exactly what I need. Our guns. Hopefully that doesn't alert the zombie and have it, like, run back in or something. Maybe it gets startled by the loud sound. You grab one of the old pistols. It's quite heavy, but you feel like you could possibly hit your target if you aimed it carefully. You raise the pistol in the air to aim at the grate and fire it, except nothing happens when you pull the trigger. Hmm. I'm going to say, the pistol is old, so I'm not surprised 
if it is somehow, um, I don't want to say defunct, but like if it is a dud, I guess. Hmm. I'm going to attempt to use the pistol as a, um, it's weird to say an improvised weapon because it already is a weapon. I'm going to attempt to pistol whip open the grate in order to retrieve the ring, like the magic ring. You know, if I can't shoot the pistol, I can still use it as a tool in a different way. I'm glad that the zombie just kind of was a dog. That that worked very well. I wonder if I could have kept the zombie as a pet. You hit the grate with the heavy pistol. It dents a bit, but it does not break. You dent it a couple more times with the gun, but it still won't open. Hmm. That's not good. So I need to find a better way to get the grate open. Okay, I'm going to say... Zombie, come back in here. And open up this grate. With your superhuman strength. Yeah, maybe... The zombie is just like a helper, you know. I originally thought the zombie was going to try to kill me, but since the zombie acts kind of like an obedient animal, maybe I need the zombie to like succeed. The zombie enters the room and rips open the grate with one quick motion. Wow. So that's kind of interesting. Um. I don't know why the zombie follows my commands, but I appreciate it. I'm going to say, thank you. Now return to your tree until I call on you again. This is working out pretty well, I'd say. Still don't know why zombies are in the mortal world, but I'm glad to see that they're like obedient. The zombie walks over to the tree, climbs it, and snaps off the top branch. Okay, cool. I'm going to reach into the open grate and retrieve the magic ring. Okay, so I'm pretty close to accomplishing my goal. I just need to slip that magic ring on my finger, uh, teleport back to the magic school, and return the ring to my roommate, and then probably tell someone that there are zombies in the mortal world. You pick up the magic ring. A figure suddenly appears in the room. It is a glowing ghostly figure, which appears to be a medieval knight, except it's missing most of its flesh. Its pasty white skull stares back at you through empty eye sockets. Okay. Interesting. I'm going to put on the magic ring and attempt to teleport back to, um, my room at the magic school. Yeah, so let's go home. I don't care if there's a ghost there. I can just leave. I can just teleport away. Don't know why there are ghosts and zombies in the mortal world. The ring glows brightly, but you do not teleport anywhere. Instead, you wake up in the morning and realize it was all a dream. You put on your robe and head to the cafeteria for some breakfast. Boo, boo, retry. Don't do the whole, like, it's all a dream thing. You place the ring on your finger and concentrate. You disappear. Meanwhile, back in the warehouse, the zombie climbs down from the tree and walks through the warehouse. It no longer seems interested in you. It picks up the gun you dropped on the floor and examines it. It's interesting that it was like, meanwhile, back at the warehouse, here's what the zombie did. Okay. I'm going to look around to see if I successfully teleported back to my room at the magic school. I need to give the ring to my roommate. And then I need to tell someone that there are, like, zombies and ghosts in the mortal realm. Even though the mortal realm, I think, is supposed to be, like, a non-magical place. You're back in your room. 
In front of you is your chair on top of your desk. Why is it on top of my desk? Uh, there is a large jar of pencils next to the desk. Why isn't that on top of the desk? A lava lamp beside the chair, okay, and a little shelf on the wall with some trophies on it. Okay, ballin'. So I'm going to um, knock on my roommate's door to see if they are home. Well, I guess to see if they are there. If they're not there, then I may have to keep the ring, I guess, until I can, like, find a time to give it back to them. You knock on your roommate's door. He opens it a crack, peeks out, then sees you and opens it the rest of the way. He looks around surprised. Where did you come from? Weren't you just in your room? Um, I'm going to say thank you for letting me borrow. Your magic ring. I used it to go visit my family. Now that I'm back, I want to give the ring back to you. Thank you again. Yeah, uh, that's pretty much all I want to say to my roommate. Uh, I should probably tell, like, the headmaster of the school or whatever about, like, the ghost and the zombies. I feel like that'd be the responsible thing to do. You hand him the ring and he puts it back on his finger. He goes over to his dresser, dresser, what's a dresser instead of like a dresser, dresser, and opens up a bottom drawer. He pulls out a $100 bill and hands it to you. What? I'm going to say, uh, why did you just give me $100? Yeah, I I don't know why I borrowed something from you and returned it. I'm not used to that being rewarded with money. Hmm. Maybe I should have just said thank you. Because you risked your life fighting off zombies to retrieve my magic ring that was lost in the zombie-infested warehouse. Oh, um, all right then. You accept the $100. But it didn't seem like a bad risk at the time. Uh, I'm not going to say that it didn't seem like a bad risk at a time thing. I have other thoughts on my mind. I'm going to say... Uh, thank you for the $100. I'm also going to say... I didn't know that the warehouse was zombie infested. I went there to retrieve my journal. So you knew there were zombies there? And you didn't tell me that there were zombies there? Yeah, that's kind of low down. I thought this was something that I needed to report. This is common knowledge that there are like just zombies in the mortal realm. Hmm. Yep, he says. But there were zombies there, you say. I know there were. I put them there, he answers. Wait, what? Are you a necromancer? Is my roommate a necromancer? Hmm. That would also probably explain the ghost that was there. No, I'm not a necromancer, he says. Wait, what? So, did you use your magic ring to teleport the zombies into the warehouse? Yeah. How did you know that I was going to go to the warehouse? Because now I have a lot of questions. Like, the premise was just that my roommate let me borrow the ring so I could visit, excuse me, my family. Now it sounds like my roommate essentially put me in a super dangerous situation for no reason. I didn't put the zombies there to begin with, he says. Hmm. 
you just said that you did put the zombies there. Hmm. I, I don't know why he's backpedaling. He's getting caught in like a weird lie. Like he, he must have lied at some point. I teleported them away. They were eating me, so I teleported them away. That doesn't make any sense. Wait, hold up. Now I'm actually kind of confused. Eating you? No, no, no. Retry that last thing about the eating him thing. I teleported them somewhere else, he says. So where did you teleport them to? Your house. My house, you say? Yes. Why my house? Because it was the most convenient place for me to teleport zombies to. So I borrowed a magic ring from you to visit my family. And then you teleported zombies to my house where my family lives. Then, when I survived, you paid me $100? <laughs> what? Is this a test? Is this a test where you get paid $100 for passing? Goodness. That is correct, he says. I'll admit, I wasn't sure if you'd survive. The ring has some interesting powers. It's a shame you lost it. It's a very nice ring. What? I didn't lose the ring. I just handed it to you. So, what? My roommate seems kind of like a dick. Like, at least somewhat like a dick. Oh well, I guess you didn't lose it then. Exactly. You tricked me into going to a zombie-infested warehouse to get your stupid ring, you shout angrily. Trick you? Tricked you, he says, surprised. I mean, that's not true. He didn't trick me into going to a zombie-infested warehouse. But he did put my family in danger. For some reason. I'm going to say, why did you put my family and I in danger? Because my roommate didn't have to do that. You know, they didn't have to send zombies to go attack my family and me. Hmm. I'm sorry you feel that way, he says. What? But why did you do it in the first place? And then he says, I already told you why. But if you'd like another reason, it was also a test. You didn't tell me why. <laughs> what? Okay. A test for what? Did one of our teachers convince you to do this as a test of my ability? This is actually kind of interesting, because I sure didn't use my fire powers. The zombie was just obedient, acted like a dog almost. Smarter than a dog, I'd say. Understood English words. No, not one of our teachers, he says. So you're saying this was a personal test? What exactly were you testing for then, you ask? Your worth as an apprentice, he says. So you want to make me your apprentice? We're roommates. Are you... Like, what? I'm trying to figure out, what's... are you like an upperclassman or something? 
Yeah, like if we're both like first years or second years or third years or whatever at the school, we're probably both first years, I would assume. Then why would you take me in as like an apprentice? He laughs a bit awkwardly. No, not at all. In fact, I'm younger than you. So you're my age then? I'm older than you, he says. I'm just young for my age. The fuck? The fuck does that mean? Retry. <laughs> AI got super confused. He begins to laugh. No, I'm not an upperclassman. I'm your teacher. I taught all of the greatest wi wait, what? I taught all of the greatest wizards in the world. What? My roommate is my teacher? <laughs> that sounds really weird. That sounds really weird. So you got a magic school. Imagine if Harry was like bunking with Dumbledore or whatever. Or I guess Dumbledore is like the headmaster. Imagine if Harry was bunking with like McGonagall or something. Sounds really odd. Yes, he says. But you're my roommate, you say. From now on, your roommate is your teacher. Who are you, you ask? I am Professor Orsted. Wow. Okay, cool. So... So instead, my teacher... The fuck? Excuse me. So my teacher let me borrow their magic ring so I could go visit my family in the mortal realm. And then I went to go to a warehouse to go find my journal. But then zombies that were summoned by my teacher to like test me, encounter me at the warehouse. I'm able to command them to go away I then attempt to use a gun I found in the warehouse. Oh, I forgot to mention, I dropped the magic ring when I get startled by the zombie, uh, and it falls into a grate. Okay, um, I attempted to use a gun that I found in the warehouse to open the grate, but it didn't work. And then I commanded the zombie to open the grate for me. A ghost showed up. I put on the magic ring, teleported back, gave the magic ring back to my roommate, who's actually my teacher. They then gave me a hundred bucks and then revealed that they were my teacher and that it was a test the whole time. So I'm going to say, isn't it weird for teachers to room with students? I also don't understand why they gave me a hundred dollars. Imagine if every time you passed a test in school, they gave you a hundred dollars. Oh, I forgot to say, isn't it weird? I just said, it's not weird for teachers to room with students. Uh, not at all, he says. What's your apartment number, you ask? You're unsure if this is a trap or not. It's 801, he says. I don't know why I would ask the what's your apartment number thing. We're roommates. We live in the same room. So whatever the number is, is also my number, I would assume. Okay, cool. So I'm going to say, um, so why pay me for passing a test if you're my professor? Yeah, this is kind of a foreign concept. Maybe that's just how they do it in magic world. You get paid money every time you pass a test. Ooh. I paid you because you passed a job test, not an academic test. I've been watching you for a while now, and I'm impressed by your work. You watched me? Yes, I have ways of knowing these things, he says vaguely. Okay. That kind of makes sense. You mentioned something about me becoming your apprentice. Okay. Uh, what duties would I have as your apprentice? This is going in like a pretty interesting direction so far. Well, you'd have to do your classwork as well as help me with some research I'm doing. 
What kind of research? The magical kind, he says. Okay. Um, are, are you researching like zombies? Yeah, because you sent a zombie to come kill me, like a super zombie or whatever. I'm trying to see how the test relates to the kind of work I would actually be doing. Becoming a like pyrokinetic zombie researcher sounds interesting. To a degree, he says. Is that the only kind of magic you do, you ask? I also have some talent in the psychological field, he says. Okay, so interesting. So you can teleport, you have a teleporting ring, you study zombies, and you study psychology. Just double checking to make sure all that's true. You seem to do a lot of teleporting related things. And more, he says excitedly. What else, you ask? I've also got the talent in the field of horror. Horror, you ask? Yes, he says, with an alarming grin on his face. Hmm, wait a minute, the game had me say. Did you record my adventure in the mortal realm? To make a horror movie? Maybe I got paid in part because I was like an actor in like his horror film or whatever. You know, to be honest, if you like zombies, you can teleport things, and you have an interest in like psychology. Oh gosh. Yes, that is correct, Orsted says. It's a very good one too. That was real, you say in disbelief? Of course it was real, he says. I mean, I probably wouldn't say the whole that was real thing. So that's why he put my life at risk. He put my life at risk to make a horror movie. So let me get this straight. I would be working as an actor for you in real life horror films, you would be teleporting monsters to me and then filming my reactions to said monsters? Question mark? What? This is, this is actually kind of interesting to be honest. Like, the concept of like magical Hollywood where like everything's real, like movie magic is just actual magic. Yes, that is correct. And these films would be broadcast for the public for entertainment? Correct once again, he says with a smile. Okay, so my professor just wants to make real life zombie movies. Um, that's kind of cool. I actually don't hate that. What a twist, I will say. Not where I thought the story was going to go. Okay, cool. Yeah, uh, all-star in real-life zombie films. That sounds like a cool part-time job to have while studying at a magic school. Yeah, I, I can't get mad at it. Sounds good to me. Orsted smiles. Is it? Hell yeah, you say, punching Orsted in the arm like a brother might. He laughs and pats you on the back. Great. I'll have everything set up by the weekend then, he says, smiling. Okay, yeah. What a weird adventure. Uh, to give you guys, like, some background on, like, why I did this adventure today, um, my friend Ryan let me know that there's, like, a live-action Winx Club show on Netflix. In case you guys don't know, I used to make fun of Winx Club back in college. I used to watch it a lot with my friend Jared. 
Um, so I created a custom scenario inspired by one of the more actiony moments of uh, today's, well, as we'd say today's Winx Club episode, but of the first Winx Club episode. I wanted to like live through it and see what I would do if I was put in like the main character's shoes. I can assure you this is not the direction that uh, the Winx Club live action show went in at all. But this is an interesting direction. Uh, I want to show this to my friend Kaylee. Uh, she's a big fan of horror and she wants to do some short films on her YouTube channel this year. Her YouTube channel is called Kaylee Creator. I think she could probably make an interesting short film based on this concept. Uh, I would love to see how it would go. Oh, that's the alarm. Thank you for joining me for another 30 minute AI Dungeon 2 adventure. Make sure you guys smash that subscribe button and ring that notification bell because I do AI Dungeon 2 videos every day. Uh, and also, feel free to check out some of my other content. I have a long-running AI Dungeon 2 series called Just Starlight and Xena Fairy Monster Hunters that has 54 episodes. So if you're a big fan of AI Dungeon 2, uh, I highly recommend that you check out that series and stay tuned for the daily episodes. Also, if you guys ever want to talk about anything, feel free to join my Discord. Discord link in the description box below. Thank you all for watching. If you guys like this video, make sure to smash that like button. Favorite, comment, subscribe, and ding, 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 ring that notification bell. Be notified whenever you do these videos. Show us your friend, your boy, Jet Black, the one only. Lock it out. Peace, guys. Check it out.